Well, good afternoon, Cavalier Nation. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I am here today at Hudson Bend Middle School. As you can see, uh, Marco and I are here, have everything set up and ready for our conversation today. Uh, Hudson Bend is one of our schools that was uh, impacted by the weather event that we've had this past week. We lost electricity uh, several times here at Hudson Bend Middle School, and, uh, but structurally everything is okay. Um, but we did have a lot of uh, facility things that we worked on this week. So I just want to go through and give you an update uh, of where we are and things that have happened this past week. First, I hope that everybody is home and safe and that you've been able to take care of you. Because I know as we get uh, into this next week and things get better, the weather improves. Roads are great for the most part now, except in shaded areas. And that we're going to have a lot of things that we need to take care of. And most importantly, that's taking care of each other. And so I know so many of you have already done that. You've checked in on loved ones, neighbors that needed help. And so thank you very much for doing that and taking part uh, of helping each other out uh, in this community. And I wanna just start by sharing a few experiences that I've had this week. Um, as most of you know, uh, my family and I moved here uh, in August to Lake Travis, uh, and we've gotten to know a lot of people in that time. But just to see the collaboration and working together that has happened this week has been phenomenal. Uh, I can tell you that we have had calls uh, with the emergency management team uh, here in Lakeway and Bee Cave uh, over the last week. Uh, every day we've had at least two calls, sometimes three calls, uh, starting at 9 o'clock in the morning, uh, even to 11 o'clock at night. And just to see the collaboration and work that has gotten us to this point. I know everybody doesn't have water. I know everybody doesn't have electricity yet, uh, but I can tell you that there's been so much work put in to make sure that our community is taken care of. Uh, and I'm excited to see uh, the collaboration that takes place in this community. I can tell you firsthand that Mayor Cox and Mayor King have done a phenomenal job of getting our community and making sure our community is taken care of. Uh, while everybody's water may not be where it needs to be right now, it's because of their hard work, the police department, the fire department, the water districts, emergency management as a whole. Uh, that's why you have water today, is because all the work. These are unprecedented times, things that we never thought we would deal with here in Lake Travis. And to watch the collaboration that has taken place uh, through all these different organizations has been amazing to see. Uh, I know that within our school district that our principals have been amazing taking care of our staff and making sure that our staff uh, is taken care of or at least have a chance to share what their needs and concerns are. Our principals have been on meetings every day with us. We've had meetings every day um, at 1130 to talk through the concerns and issues that we've had um, as a community, as a district, uh, and to watch and know what they have done while so many of our principals uh, and staff have been dealing with their own issues at home. Um, I know one of our principals was in a meeting and his home was 32 degrees one day. and and just that he was checking on his staff and his kids knowing what was going on in these uh, in his home. Uh, it just speaks to the, to the quality of people that we have here in Lake Travis and how blessed we are. Our maintenance team has been out uh, checking campuses, uh, sometimes risking their well-being to make sure that our campuses are taken care of. Um, our uh, support staff, uh, technology teams have done the same, making sure that we have technology up in the district and that we're able to, to do the things that we need to do uh, as a school district and as a community. Uh, our teachers checking on their students. Uh, and a lot of our teachers and staff didn't have electricity, didn't have internet. Um, and so if your child wasn't checked on, that's very reason why is because our teachers, so many of our teachers still are struggling with uh, the needs that they have for their home. And so to, to know that they've reached out to their students to make sure that they're okay has been great. Um, been in contact every day with our Board of Trustees. Our Board of Trustees making sure that we have what we need to take care of our staff and our students uh, It's just been awesome. And so we are very blessed with an incredible uh, Board of Trustees to make sure that we do the things that we need to do. And then to see our leadership team uh, as well, working, uh, walking campuses, delivering water, doing so many things with our, our cabinet uh, has, has been great this week. And so just how we've come together as a team to try to take care of everything that we can. While we know it's not perfect, the cities know it's not perfect, it's so much better than it would have been uh, if, if it hadn't 
had this unified effort. And I, the biggest thing that we're gonna take out of this, just like we did out of COVID, is lessons learned. What are things that we are gonna learn from this experience to where hopefully it never happens again, but if it does, that we are better prepared to make sure that we meet the needs uh, of all of our staff, our students, and our community um, as a whole. So um, as you know, uh, we sent an announcement out last night, and we'll talk about this here in a few minutes, but we have canceled school for Monday, February 22nd. We'll talk about the reasons for that here shortly, but we want to make sure that we got that information to you and make sure that you have a chance to, to ask questions and, and, and concerns that you may have. Um, on Thursday, our district maintenance team started working on all the pieces of our campuses and facilities to make sure uh, that they're working. We're still working on some of the infrastructure pieces, the buses, et cetera, to make sure that they are ready to go for school this next week. Um, we had a couple technology issues that our technology team and campuses worked through this week. And currently, West Cypress Hills Elementary still does not have water. And we don't know when that water will come back on. And so we, we've been told it could be uh, as late as Tuesday before water comes back on that campus. So that is information that we will continue uh, to keep you aware of because obviously if we don't have water, we're not gonna be able to have school um, at that campus. And so we'll continue to update you uh, as, as situations change and things get better. Um, this week, uh, I had the opportunity to walk our campuses. I was able to walk all of our campuses this week, uh, except for one. Um, the biggest issue that we had this week, facilities wise, was Lake Point Elementary. We had a busted water line there, um, but I can tell you that within a couple of hours, it was seen and addressed. Um, our maintenance team was there in no time, uh, soaking up the water, getting the water turned off, uh, fixing the leak. And I can tell you the day that it happened, uh, at 9.45 that night uh, is when the final fix on that was done. And so uh, our maintenance team, again, 9.45, a couple of nights ago when it was below freezing, they were putting themselves at risk to make sure that our facilities were in great shape. So we're so proud of the work that they have done uh, with uh, for, our, for our team. Um, many of our bus drivers, teachers, our staff are dealing with their own personal issues. Uh, some that still don't have water. We have a large percentage of our teaching and staff that, that still don't have water. A lot of the water here uh, in our community has been, uh, is in good shape and is getting in better shape, um, but we still have a lot of staff who do not have, uh, have water. We're continuing to check our HVAC systems because a lot of those things were shut down uh, over the last few days. And so that and buses are the big things that I, we are working on right now. So. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, out of the utmost concern for our staff uh, and our students and our families, we have canceled school on Monday, February 22nd. Uh, classes have been canceled uh, because we have a lot of issues that, that we continue to deal with. District offices will be closed Monday as well, but we'll continue to uh, answer via email and lots of other things. There'll still be a lot of us walking campuses on Monday, uh, making sure that things are in really good shape for our students when they hopefully come on campus on Tuesday. Uh, one thing, the main reason that we're not having school on Mondays is because we have a lot of staff that will not be able to come to work on Monday. They are dealing with their own issues at home, uh, busted water pipes, still don't have water. All of West Cypress Hill still does not have water. We have a lot of staff that lives in that part of our school district. Um, and so to make sure that we're taking care of our staff and that they have what they need, we cancel school on Monday. Um, another reason is that we know that with short staff, uh, if we did have kids come to school on Monday, that we would be dealing uh, with COVID. It is still something that we are living with and dealing with every day. We have not changed our COVID protocols. Uh, we do anticipate that because of this, our COVID numbers will continue to improve, um, but we do not want to have kids come to campus on Monday and we have to put 30 to 40 kids in a classroom. Uh, coming out of this uh, weather issue, still in a pandemic with COVID, uh, we did not want to do anything to increase the, the possibility of COVID in our community, in our area. And so again, out of an abundance of caution, we've canceled school for Monday. Um, our goal is to have school on Tuesday, uh, West Cypress Hills being the question mark in that because of the water condition at West Cypress Hills. But we do anticipate that uh, hopefully we will be able to have school on Tuesday. Um, please be sure to check your campus websites. Your principals will be sending out information as well but just know that we are uh, staying on top of everything that's going on and make sure that we take care of our staff and our students uh, as best as possible. 
We will be having folks on campus this Monday, again, assessing all of our situations, uh, our buses, our HVAC, all those things. So we will have people around on Monday. One thing that TEA did uh, release last week was a waiver that we could apply for. What it is is a waiver for the bad weather elements that we've been dealing with. And, uh, and so we uh, have that waiver. We will be submitting that waiver for the four days of instruction that we lost last week. Remember last Monday was a professional development day. So we had four days of instruction last week and we'll be applying for that waiver for Monday, uh, February 22nd as well. And so what we uh, will do is we'll submit that waiver. Uh, every anticipation is that TEA will approve it because of the campus issues that we have and we will not be required to make up those days. And so we won't have to adjust our school calendar at this point because of bad weather days. Uh, obviously our principals are gonna be working with our staff to make sure that we meet the needs of our students and make sure we have everything uh, covered. I know there's a lot of questions about other things, but our, our hope is that uh, we will not have to make up these days at the end of the school year uh, and extend the school year um, at any point. Uh, another thing that we're doing on Monday is our food and nutrition services department. We're providing food um, at all three middle schools, including Hudson Bend. Uh, Monday at Hudson Bend Middle School, a Big Cave Middle School, and Lake Travis Middle School. So you can go and pick up lunches and breakfast between 9.30 and 12.30, you will, you will need to bring a student ID. The student does not have to come, but we do need that student ID uh, to be able to provide um, those meals to our students. And so again, all three middle schools, 9.30 to 12.30 on Monday uh, for anybody that needs to come pick up meals for their, their students. Um, also, our curriculum instruction department is working on resources for our teachers when we reopen. And we're also looking at extending the grace period uh, to submit grades into this week so more information will be coming out from your principals and from our curriculum instruction uh, department uh, in the coming days you know when we have events like this just like with covid anytime that you have a, a tragic event you find ways to come together and, and what can we do to make a positive out of this we talked about lessons learned how can we be better prepared not just in case something tragic happens but what systems can we have better implemented to ensure that we're as efficient as possible um, during uh, an event like this? And so, again, we do expect that our COVID numbers will decline because everybody has been uh, at home, but we cannot let our guard down. We need to continue when we start school, uh, hopefully on Tuesday, uh, we'll continue with our COVID protocols. None of those changes have been uh, approved at the state level. So please continue uh, and come to school prepared on Tuesday for our uh, for COVID protocols to be followed, uh, continue to be very careful as you go out. I know that driving around the last couple of days in our community, if you drive by any drive through restaurant, uh, they basically have uh, 71 and 620 backed up uh, because people need food and they're going to uh, all those drive through restaurants, Chick-fil-A, McDonald's, uh, name it, and they are lined up on us. So please be careful as you're out traveling. Um, but please make sure you continue to follow those protocols. Um, this should give us a good jump to get out of COVID. Now we don't need to do anything to bring that back. And so please, I know that we're all tired of COVID. I know that we're all tired of wearing the mask and following the protocols, uh, but we need to continue to do so, so we can get past this pandemic and not have a spike like we did um, last month. Um, watching our local businesses this past week uh, and different groups that have come out and done so many things. I know some churches have opened their doors for different events and for food. I know that 1231 Lakeway Bee Cave uh, and surrounding has done a phenomenal job this week uh, trying to get uh, the needs of our community met. And so thank you to, to all those groups. Uh, it's so amazing to watch neighbors being neighbors uh, in a crisis like this. Uh, you don't always see that. And to see that people have taken care of each other uh, and, and provided for each other uh, in a time of need uh, has been amazing uh, to watch. Uh, the outpouring of love within this community has been great. Uh, we also have some students that did some incredible things this week. And I know that we have students throughout this community um, that have helped at, at churches and helped with neighborhoods. Um, but specifically, I know our FFA kids uh, at the high school uh, were out in the weather every day, getting there with the support of their parents and their teachers to make sure that their animals we're fed, we're warm, we're taken care of, uh, just to see uh, how dedicated they are uh, to their animals and protecting those animals. Uh, and having met with those students and walked through the barn, I, I know what they were faced with and dealing with 
A lot of you don't, may not know it, but I grew up on a dairy, so I know what these kids are going through every day. And so to watch our kids get out in this weather, I milked cows in this weather, so I know what they're dealing with. To watch what they did to make sure their animals were taken care of uh, was great this week. And so proud of those students and their parents uh, for making sure that that happened. Um, and that's such a great example of our parents uh, setting the example for their kids. And, uh, you know, we've, we've seen a lot of uh, bad examples uh, over the, since COVID started, of people. Uh, but to see the good and the positive that comes out uh, in this community, uh, which is what is great about Lake Travis, is this community always steps up. When things are falling apart in other parts uh, of the state and of the United States, the people here in Lake Travis want what's best for our kids and our community. And so thank you for doing a phenomenal job of, of doing that. So um, I failed to mention at the very beginning of this that we would take some questions and answers. So if you have some questions that you would like to ask, please drop those uh, in the chat. Um, I don't have access to the chat on here, so I'll actually be looking at my laptop uh, to look at questions. But if you do have questions, please feel free uh, to put them in the chat. Uh, that way we can make sure that we get that, those questions answered um, as, much as, as, much, as well as we can. There may be some things that we don't have answers to yet, uh, but we will get that information out uh, as soon as possible um, if we don't. So um, how can we get a water tank truck to go around to deliver water uh, to the community? I know that there are various spots out with, throughout the community that the cities are working as distribution points. Um, the water, um, I know that water is, is coming. Uh, I know that there's been lots of issues to get water in from, from different parts of the state. Um, but I can assure you that through the emergency management calls that we've been on the past uh, week, that water is a huge uh, area of concern. And so while those are not all set up and active at this point, uh, once the water is here, I know the cities uh, and emergency management will get that out to people in different neighborhoods and so be looking for information from the cities and from the county of where um, those distribution locations will be um, which uh, will tuesday be an a day or a b day um, assuming you open on tuesday um, we'll have that information uh, mr butler always sends out his uh, calendar of what days are each week and so be looking for his newsletter and uh, I don't have that information with me right here but I'm sure I uh, know Mr. Butler and, and uh, the great uh, newsletters that he sends out every week I'm sure he will have that in his newsletter so please be looking for that uh, when, it, when it comes out. Uh, when do we have school? We hope to have school on Tuesday. Our goal is to have school on Tuesday. Uh, West Cypress Hills uh, is the only one that um, could potentially, we know could potentially be longer um, because of uh, not having water at that campus or in that neighborhood as a whole. So we do plan on having, uh, assuming everything continues to trend positively, having school on Tuesday. All the, do the schools have water? Yes, now all the schools do have water except for West Cypress Hills. And so uh, that is a very good thing is that we will, uh, we do have school, um, water at our campuses and electricity at our campuses and so that is not an issue um, at that point. We know that when West Cypress Hills comes on there may be some uh, uh, boil orders that come along with that um, and so we'll continue to be mindful of that uh, very well, very much so. This. We will submit the waiver um, as soon as we can to TEA. Uh, the question was uh, when will we know if the waiver's approved to not have to make these days up? Uh, we will submit that waiver to TEA uh, as soon as possible. And then once we hear back from TEA, we will get that information out to our community that, that everything is, is covered. We, we feel very strongly that that will be the case, that we will not be required to make up these days. Um, TEA has been very clear about that. Uh, and with our water and other issues that we've had in our community, uh, it's a statewide waiver. It's just not, it's not just for here. Um, but with the concerns and issues that we've had in our community with safety uh, and bad weather, we know that that's going to be taken care of. There is not a boil water notice for our schools uh, right now. Uh, the anomaly to that is, again, West Cypress Hills. Um, when the water comes back on there, we very well may be dealing with 
um, a bull water issue, but we don't have that information at that time. But we fully anticipate that that will be the case. Uh, and so if we do have a bull water issue, then we will hold off on starting school uh, unless there is a very easy way that is state approved for us to do that. But my anticipation is that we would not have school until that is lifted. Uh, would West Cypress Hills be virtual on Tuesday? Uh, no, not uh, at this point. Um, we're hoping that we'll have an answer on the water by the end of the day today. Um, uh, so Ms. Bennigan and, and us, will, we will send out information as soon as we know what the water situation is uh, and when we have an anticipated date. Um, but because of all the elect, uh, electricity issues as well and internet issues throughout our community, uh, we feel like it's not advantageous to have uh, remote instruction at this point. What if uh, we are virtual? That, again, uh, that, that I just addressed that question. If we don't have uh, internet access, then uh, that's why we're not going to go the remote route is because we know a lot of our families are still dealing with electricity and internet issues. Which schools had burst pipes? Uh, uh, LTE right now has a kitchen sprinkler. Uh, LTMS uh, has a couple of leaks. Uh, maintenance is there and repairing them now. We had a couple of leaks uh, outside uh, at the high school and various campuses. Uh, but again, the worst leak that we had was a busted pipe um, at Lake Point. And that was addressed and fixed that day. Um, I can assure you that because I was there and made sure uh, when we knew that we had the leak, uh, one of our uh, senior leadership uh, staff members was at the campus. I called it in. Um, I went there, our maintenance team went there, and it was uh, addressed, and Frank and our maintenance team was there within 30 minutes uh, of getting the call and fixed the leak, got the water cut off, and uh, everything has been fixed as far as the water leak, and we'll be ready for school whenever that happens. Um, the Ag Barn had a restroom uh, water leak this morning uh, that's being prepared um, right now. And so uh, that's our, um, our main issues that we've had as far as facilities um, in, our, in our campuses. Uh, why not just do online for the week and allow for solving these things properly because a lot of our families still don't have electricity and internet service. Uh, I know that we have uh, sections of our community that are still without internet service and cannot get instruction um, right now. Uh, and so this decision has been made to make sure that we keep everything fair and equi equitable for all of our students, um, that hopefully uh, we can get back into campus on Tuesday and go from there. What is the best way to help staff um, that's in need? Um, our staff has a lot of needs right now. And so our principals have been working with our staff to get a list of what they need. Um, and so you can check in uh, with the different principals on the campuses uh, or your child's teacher. If you wanna reach out to your child's teacher and see what they need uh, and see what you can do to, to help them as a, as a class or as a group, I know that they would truly appreciate that uh, and, and have that opportunity to, uh, to hear from you as well. Um, and we'll also share resources as they become um, available um, for our staff. Uh, is missing all this time going to overwhelm the kids with info they need to know for exams? Uh, that's a great question. question. Uh, we're working with our principals to make sure that we don't overwhelm our students, um, that we make sure that we have the inform they get the information and the TEKS that they need for this year. You know, this is a lot like COVID, and uh, yes, instruction is important, and our kids need to have that information, but our goal right now is to take care of our kids and our staff, because we all know that if they're not in a good place mentally and physically to learn, then there's no way that they're going to be able to absorb the information that they're given. And so um, we want to make sure that we have uh, good information for our students, but uh, we're not going to overwhelm them with lots of information when they arrive back on campus. Are the kids still expected to take STAR this school year given COVID and now the weather situation? 
Uh, TEA has told us that students uh, on campus are required to take the STAR test this year. They say it will not be used uh, for accountability. It will not be used in a negative way. It's more of an information get to where we can see where our students are. Um, but so the students that are on campus learning uh, will have to take the STAR test. Students that are remote uh, do not. Uh, that change just happened in the last two weeks. Um, before that, they were saying our remote kids did. So, you know, as we go through the, the coming weeks, all these things are possible changes could be coming forward. But as of the latest information that we have from TEA, um, we will be giving the STAR test. Um, and I know there's a lot of legislators working to try to get it uh, eliminated again this year, especially considering that schools all across the state, uh, most of them missed a good portion of this last week, if not all of it. Um, so again, that, that may change. That's not a local decision that we make in Lake Travis, that's a TEA decision. And so we will keep you updated uh, if anything changes um, on that front. Will kids be ready for the AP exams? I know that Mr. Butler and his staff are working through that and uh, seeing what our kids need to be ready for the AP test because it's very important that our students are prepared and ready for that test. Uh, to my knowledge, we've heard nothing um, from College Board of any changes. Uh, again, those aren't decisions that we make, uh, but we do want to make sure that our students are prepared uh, at the high school. And uh, I know that Mr. Butler and his staff will, will take that into uh, consideration. Uh, do we have internet um, at Lake Travis? Yes, uh, our campuses uh, do have internet at this point. Repair of softball field net and poles. I saw that the other day. The, I know the pole by third base was bent. Uh, I know earlier this week they were removing ice from the nets to minimize damage. Uh, and now that everything's thawed out, we'll be going out and reevaluating those things. So there's a lot of things in the district now that the freeze is over with that we'll be going back and reassessing uh, to make sure that our kids uh, and our facilities are in good shape. Um, but we will make sure that the, the poles are, are safe and the net is safe for our students. Uh, any chance with COVID uh, and the ice storm would cancel STAR? I don't know if you've seen it, but there's lots of t-shirts out that say SNOVID 21. Uh, so we'll affectionately re refer to this weather event as SNOVID um, STAR. It, we talked about that just a minute ago, uh, we're, we'll, that we're at the mercy of the state for that. All right. I'm trying to look through these questions. What if your current learning preference is virtual already and no internet? Once you get back on, just notify your teacher and the campus that you don't have internet and they will work with you to make sure that, that your child does not get behind. All right, uh, well, thank you very much for those questions. I know a few more questions are coming in. So if we did not address or answer your question, uh, please feel free. Uh, to send that question to info at ltisdschools.org, uh, info at ltisdschools.org, and we will get your questions uh, answered. Uh, if you joined us late, just be reminded that this will be posted live on our Facebook page, as well as our YouTube channel, uh, LTISD Schools. So if you got on here late or you, you know that people wanted to watch this that missed the event, please have them join in uh, and, and uh, watch. And if they have questions, they are more than welcome to send their questions to info at ltisdschools.org and we will get that taken care of. Um, as we wrap up this afternoon, uh, I wanna say yes, it's, it's been an interesting semester. Uh, as we've rolled through COVID and now through SNOVID 21, uh, it has been um, a year like none others. Uh, but I wanna reiterate again, I am so proud of how our staff has come together, how our families have come together, how this community has come together uh, to take care of each other. N none of us have had the perfect situation. None of us have dealt with absolutely nothing. And we've all had issues and things that we've dealt with through this uh, SNOVID 21 events. But what I want to reiterate is just how impressed I am with the teamwork from the county to the local governments. We are so thankful for uh, what you have done. So. Um, be looking for information about school on Tuesday. Uh, that'll be coming out uh, as soon as we have a change. Uh, but hopefully we'll have school on Tuesday, February 23rd. We're still looking for information on water 
for West Cypress Hills. Uh, but until then, until then, stay safe, stay warm. Uh, thank you for taking care of each other. Uh, and thank you for being with us this afternoon. Uh, and thank you to this Lake, this Lake Travis family for all that you've done. Have a great Saturday. Enjoy the sunshine. And we will see you next time.